Hey, good morning everybody. Day 21. Can you believe it? For three weeks we have been gathering uh, in this space and praying together. And uh, three weeks, right? Uh, we have made it our, our purpose. We've made a decision, a commitment uh, to join together in prayer. And it really has been uh, life-changing. 2020, here we are, almost the end of the very first month. And these three weeks, we together have been making a commitment uh, to connect with God first uh, in, in prayer. And the difference that it's made in your life, I, I want you to continue. Uh, outside uh, today, uh, a little chilly for Florida, uh, 50 degrees, and uh, but on my back porch, my veranda, uh, I've got my fireplace going, so I'm not uh, all that cold. I hope that you're warm, maybe still under the covers and tuning in and joining. Uh, so um, today we're going to be praying, and uh, if you got your Bible, you can join me, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, Ephesians 2 and 10, Ephesians 2, 10. Um, but what, what, how we're going to land um, our, our time together is praying that we would be, we would be used by God. Um, God created you and God designed you. You are not an ordinary um, work by God. You are extraordinary. Uh, listen, listen to what God's Word says. For we are God's workmanship. We are God's handiwork. God created you. God designed you. We were created in Christ Jesus to do good works, not average work, not C work, not enough work to pass the test to get out of the class just to get barely graduate. God created you to do good and great works. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God ordained this. God created the universe. He created the earth. And in advance, he knew that he needed you, and he needed you, and he needed me. He needed us here, January 25th, 2020. So it's not by accident. It's not happenstance. You've got a calling on your life. That calling on your life, it's not just for pastors, for missionaries. You are a Christ follower. You have been saved by Jesus Christ. God loved you so much, he gave Jesus. That's how important you are to God. Jesus loves us so much that he left the Holy Spirit to guide us, to direct us, to teach us, to instruct us, to prepare us for spiritual warfare. And so today we are going to pray that God uses our lives. Our lives are so much more than making a living. So much more than trying to figure out what college I'm going to go to and what will be my career and how much money should I put in my 401k and where are we going to go on vacation this year and will I get to retire and listen, all those things are moments in life, but God wants us to maximize our life. He wants us to create a movement where people discover we are people. We're discovering hope in Christ and other people are discovering hope in Christ. So today as we pray, I, I, I want you to lean in. I want you to tell God that you're ready to put you, put you in the game. Like, a, like a, an athlete telling the coach, Co Coach, I want, I want the ball. Do you? Do you want the ball? Do you want to take the shot in your family? Take the shot in your neighborhood? Take the shot at work? Take the shot on your high school, middle school campus? I, listen, God wants us. He doesn't want us just to sit in the stands and be spectators. He doesn't want us just to get along to go along. He wants us to step in and to be who he created us to be. And so we're going to, we're going to pray. And then I want to let you know, in Central Florida, um, tomorrow at noon, we have started, I've started a, a brand new discipleship class, um, a training class every single Sunday. We have our two morning gatherings at 9 and 10.30 a.m. And then I'm teaching four distinct classes on discipleship, how you can know God, how you can find freedom, how you can discover, you know, what is my purpose? God created me on purpose and for purpose. And tomorrow, the 25th, I'll be teaching about how you can go out and make a difference. Uh, I will show you how, not just like as a Christ follower, making a difference isn't serving God, isn't just at the church that you attend. That's, that's only a couple hours out of a 168 hour work week right? Um, 
your life, every place you go, we're called to make a difference. The question, am I? Do I make a difference through the the Starbucks line to get my cup of coffee? Does that barista, when I when I get my cup of coffee from her or him, is, is her life changed? Am I making a difference in my yoga instructor? Uh, am I making a difference when I go to the Y, go to the club, go to the gym? Do I make a difference in my boss, in my employees? Making it, God has created you to make a difference, not to just you know, survive life. Too many of us are trying to just survive life. God created you to thrive in life. You are a child, a daughter of God. He's got your daggone picture on his nightstand. He's put the artwork of your life on his refrigerator. You are that important. You are Jesus important to him. So I want us to pray, and I want you to play, pray boldly that God uses you to make a difference, that, that God will fill you and direct you and guide you in all things. And then tomorrow in Central Florida, listen, from one hour, come and invest in your life. You've always wanted to make a difference. So join me at noon. If you haven't registered, uh, you can register today. Uh, you can you know, send um, an email to ashley at hopeinocala.com, ashley at hopeinocala.com, and say, I'm in that class. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to be a world changer, and we'll see you tomorrow at noon. If for whatever reason you don't uh, register, I'll make room for you this time alone, right? Um, to everybody, my friends up in Pennsylvania, uh, we're not streaming this class, so uh, I won't be able to share it with you, but I want you to know in Pennsylvania, I love you, and having you all with us uh, from Western PA, that, that's meant a lot to me during these 21 days. In Ohio, uh, up in Michigan, uh, in Maryland, uh, California, um, down in Australia, uh, over in the UK, it's been great having so many of you uh, gathering together. All right, so we're going to pray. Let me just put let me just put God's word back in and play. Remember I've taught you acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. You you adore him, you you lavish praise on him, you confess, right? You confess the stuff's in the junk, you don't need to stay the junk in the trunk, don't need to stay there no more. And then thanksgiving, right? You can't worry and be anxious while you're simultaneously being um, th filled with gratitude. And then supplication will be praying for praying for other people. Um, Here's what God's word says in Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. That's what God says. We are created by God for God. We are created by God in Christ Jesus. You love Jesus? Jesus created you, and he created you to do good works. You're going to pray for that, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Let's pray together. Hey, God, it's Mark and a bunch of friends joining on Facebook and Instagram. And I just want to praise you. Your, your presence is warmer than this fire this morning. You are the creator God. You are the sustainer of life. You're the God that gives us hope and peace in a chaotic world. And so we lift our voices this morning and we declare on this Saturday, the 25th day, 21 days of praying together, we declare that there is no one like you. You are majestic and you are holy and you are pure and you are just and greatly are you to be praised. We declare these praises of your goodness. God, you don't have to do anything for us to be good because you are good. You are perfect and we declare it with our lips. Would you just declare it right now with your lips how good God is? Tell him he's good just because he's an ever-present God. Tell him he's good because he's an all-knowing God. Tell him he's good because he's an all-powerful God. Tell him he's good because he's faithful he keeps his promises. Tell him he's a good God because he's sovereign. And that's what you said, God, that you sovereignly, you created us and these good works that you want us to do, you created us far in advance before even the day that you brought a man and a woman to conceive us and to bring us into a mother's womb and to birth us into life. God, you have created us in Christ Jesus. We are your handiwork. And our culture pushes, even ourselves, God, I'll look at myself and say, well, I'm only five foot seven. God was about a foot short in my life. And God, I'm not recognizing your handiwork. Forgive us when we have um, uh, diminished your handiwork by the, the, the things that we don't see and wish that we had, by the color of our skin or the color of our hair, if our hair is straight or our hair is curly. If we're born into this family or have this kind of job, we are your handiwork. We are your workmanship. And we ask for forgiveness for, for demeaning and diminishing your, your handiwork. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would remind us 
that because we are God's handiwork, we should take care of ourselves, take care of how we think, to take every captive thought, take every thought captive, to think on things that are right and true and pure. We ask God that you'd help us to treat these, these bodies with, with the proper sleep that we need, to go to bed, to, to drink glasses of water, seven, eight, nine, ten glasses of water every day, to eat food that is, that is real and not processed, uh, to, to allow you to be in control of all the worry and the stress and the pressure points. God, we are your handiwork and we declare it. And we have been created in Christ Jesus for good works. So God, we want to ask that you'd show us those good works. Would you right now, would you tell God that you want to be his good work in your, your place of work? What is that? We want to, I want to have good work, God, as a, as a husband to Linda. I want to do good work as a daddy to Emily and to Katie. I, I want to do good work uh, to fellow pastors. I want to do good work for my clients with MDC Life and Leadership Development Company. God, I want to do good work as I train as a triathlete. God, I want to do good work in the way that I interact with my neighbors. God, I, I want to ask to be good work at Church of Hope. I'm asking that hundreds and thousands of people would come this year and discover hope in your son Jesus. We want to do good work and to invite our friends and, and co-workers and family members to come and discover hope in your son, Jesus. I want to do good work in our community where people don't just see us gather someplace on Sunday to give lip service to being a follower of Jesus, but I want them to see our lives where we live out this good work in our, in our very lives. We want to do good work in you using us to, to bring hope and healing into marriages and into families. God, I want to do good work in writing a book this year that will help parents to raise up their children to go the distance. God, I, I, want, to, I want to write a book that will cause parents to see that raising that boy and raising that girl to love you and to know you is most important in their life. More important than Little League and more important than travel ball and volleyball and basketball and football and, and all the other things, swimming and dance classes, all the other things that we make time for. God, I want to do good work in, in raising up a generation that will chase hard after you. I want to do good work in raising up worshipers that come on Sunday mornings at a place called Hope and lift their voices and declare with enthusiasm, with hands lifted high and with a heart that is lifted with great adoration for who you are. But then, God, I don't want worship to stop on Sunday. I want it to continue on Monday and all through Tuesday and on hump day Wednesday that worship will give us the strength to finish the week off strong. And on Throwback Thursday, I ask God that our worship will be greater than it's ever been before. And thank God for saving us through Jesus on Friday that our worship will continue. And Saturday, our worship will be filled with anticipation of gathering together with a body of believers at Mary Camp Road on Oak, in Ocala, Florida. God, put your hand of favor on all who have been joining. May you help all of us to continue what has started in the beginning of 2020, these 21 days of prayer. And may this prayer time in the morning be the warmth fire that drives us and guides us throughout the day. God, favor these people. I do ask that you would help Keith and that you would restore his body and the difficult news that he's received about his body. Thank you for the visit with Tommy yesterday and see how Tommy's trusting you the way he served out at Advent Hospital and Kiwanis and continue to use him for your glory. For 1440, God, as they gather this coming Sunday night, there'd be students who would discover hope in your son, Jesus. For our, 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 our hospitality team out in the parking lot and in our cafe and welcoming people on our campus, they would see it's a good work. For our musicians and our, and our vocalists and God, for everybody in Hope Kids Preschool and Hope Kids Elementary, and God, for our prayer team, that they'd have boldness and, and great, great authority. For our missionaries, Martin Vargas down in South Florida and all the work that he's doing around the world. And, and Amy Rittering, and God, I ask for, for Katie that you'd show her insights and whether or not she's to be a part of what um, um, uh, Amy's doing there. God, I pray for our next-gen team, that they'd just be fired up, that they would see the good work in raising up this next generation. Lord, I love you. I can't wait to, to be with the body of Christ tomorrow at Mary Camp at Church of Hope. God, make this be a phenomenal day. I sure do love you. In the name of Jesus, tell him right now before we say amen, will you just say that I love you, Jesus? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. It's been a great 21 days. It doesn't have to stop in your life. 
you've got to make a plan for tomorrow morning to get ready to pray and then Monday morning do exactly what you've been doing start with a little Bible verse then have some prayer time know this uh, in August we're gonna come back and we're gonna do 21 days of prayer again and uh, don't be surprised that uh, I'll, I'll send out something you can set your notifications on um, Instagram and on Facebook and uh, perhaps along the way we'll have a special uh, morning prayer time uh, throughout the coming weeks and months if you're interested we are developing a prayer team at Church of Hope uh, if you're interested you want to join like God's touched your heart and praying um, it's kind of taking you to a to a new place um, and you want to even particularly pray intercede for others you know when we pray for other peoples it really stre strengthens them we are putting a prayer team together here's what I want you Hey, Facebook, I hope you're back on. My phone got too hot because of the fire, and so it shut down and said it was temperature was too hot. Uh, but I'm going to finish this video. Kind of crazy how that uh, ended our 21 days of prayer. But what I was saying, if you want to join our praise team, or in our praise team, our prayer team, um, email Becca at HopeInOcala.com. Becca at HopeInOcala.com. And don't keep your phone so close to the fire because it's going to say the temperature got too hot and shut it off. That was crazy. Hey, I love you guys. See you tomorrow, Church of Hope.